you were with CNN with many of us came to know you. Yep. That was uh that was uh, February 2007 to April 2013. To 2013. How'd yep. you end up at CNN? Um, so here's what was interesting. So <laughs> um Mark Watts was a former CNN national correspondent who later became a, um, an agent. Mark, I met when I got the Alpha Scholarship when I was a high school student. He was reporting in Houston. Mark is an Alpha. I later become an Alpha. So um, I, we knew each other through the National Association of Black Journalists. And so Mark became my agent. So 2001, 2001, was it two? Uh, I'm in Chicago for a uni journalist of color mentoring deal. And uh, no, no, I remember 2000. So, okay, here's how 2000 Bush and Gore are running against each other. And I'm watching one of the debates and I'm really upset because I don't like the analysis that I'm hearing because frankly, they were ignoring a bunch of stuff that I thought was important. So I called Mark. I was like, yo, next presidential election, I'm going to be doing this. I said, because this is bullshit what I'm hearing. They ain't talking about the real issues that black people care about and regular people care about. And the next that was 2000. The next year, I'm in Chicago and Henry Malden, they're try, they are hot on Suzanne Malvo, okay, who just left CNN. They are hot. And so Mark represented Suzanne. They would want anything to sign Suzanne. So Mark said, all right, Henry comes to Chicago to meet with Mark. Mark goes, he goes, all right, well, you want Suzanne? You got to be Roland Martin. Here, Ma was like, who the hell is Roland Martin? Mark's like, don't matter. Y'all want her? Y'all got to meet with Roland. So I come there and it was crazy. I had I had nothing but uh, dashiki. So all these, all these old simple silence out there who think I started wearing African outfits um, after I left CNN are stupid. Uh, I got married in one. Uh, and then uh, I got married in one in 2001. So I'm sitting here, dude, at this event, at, at come to Mark's office, straight up in one of my uh, dashikis. So I walk in and Henry goes, and he's like, why am I meeting with this dude? So he goes, all right, so you want to be an anchor? Nope. Want to be a reporter? Nope. And now it's confused. like, what do you want to be? So I describe what I wanted to be. Now, mind you, what I'm describing doesn't exist at the time. So I was literally, and I've been this way my whole career, I was literally seven, six, seven years ahead of where we eventually got to. And I described it, and that was a deal. And so he, so he goes, all right, well, you know, I, I, we can book you on a few shows. I said, no, bro, let me help you out. I said, I, ain't, I, said, I don't want you to, just to be seen as arrogant. I said, well, let me be real clear. I just need y'all to book me one time. He looked at me. I said, you book me one time. I guarantee y'all going to book me again. And this is exactly how I looked at him. And hearing Malden looked at me, I said, one time. I can guarantee you, you are going to book me again. And so they booked me on CNN's Talk Back Live. Lit that shit up. <laughs> got booked again. I, I did straight up. You can you can call Henry Malden today or Mark Watts today. They will tell you that's exactly what I said. And a year late, and then when, a year later, uh, I made several appearances, and we were at a black journalist convention, and I was so we were telling the story, and I said, Henry, didn't I tell you book me one time? He like, yeah, you did. And he said, and I thought you were arrogant and cocky as hell. I said, was I lying? He said, no, you were not lying. And that's the whole deal. So when you when you know what your gifting is, mm -hmm. when you mm -hmm. know what you're going to do, bruh, what, what did Joe Namath say? He said, uh, he said, what did J Joe said? He said, it ain't arrogant if you can do it. That's tough. Dude. That's so, right. So that's the deal. When you know, that's why, man, I was, so the other day I was, so what, I saw this story, what? Jim Jones was compl was complaining because Dipset. Oh, oh, we need a we need a we need a uh, uh, we need a, uh, 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 a second battle with the lots because we weren't ready. Oh man, the stage was too busy. We need more security. Need more space. No, nah, bro. When you can bring that heat, you can bring that heat in a phone booth or in Madison Square Garden. That's Yo, the deal. When you know what when you know what you can do, 
You ain't worried about space. You don't care about the temperature. You don't care if it's too hot, too cold. You don't care if it's packed, if it's small. All you say is, let me know when that red light on that camera come on. Do you understand that you just talked about Jim Jones? Because I was like, where's he going with this? Dude, I saw that story. Jim Jones and the locks. Like, ain't nobody expecting you to know about the Jim Jones. The, the, well, the that, death set. But that's the first, that's the first thing. That's the first thing I when I saw that story and I saw they battle. That's the first thing I said that's through. I was like, no, y'all asses weren't ready. Y'all asses weren't prepared. <laughs> no, you, you, which means, dude, if you, when you got it, you don't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If you can hoop, you can say, I can hoop, I can hoop at this park in the hood, or I can hoop at Madison Square Garden. It doesn't matter. That's what I'm trying, that's why I try to explain to people. Why you got to always build your game. When you're talking about why do I read so much? Why do I study so much? Why do I almost have a photographic memory that when I'm reading a book, I can have instant recall to facts? I gave a speech once. I don't even write speeches. I just asked how much time I got. And I actually quoted from 14 different books in my speech. I didn't realize I quoted from 14 different books. The library of North Carolina State put a reading list out of all the books I mentioned in my one hour uh, speech. And it was 14 different books. That's the piece. The thing is, when you are when you are prepared and ready, you don't know when the moment hits. So here's what happened at CNN. I'm doing appearances for four and a half years. They calling me. They calling me. They calling me. You call me. Boom, I'm there on a moment's notice. I'm at NABJ in Dallas on a panel talking about how to always be ready as a television commentator while sitting on the panel, CNN calls me. I ain't even work, CNN, I'm not even working there. CNN calls me, I leave the panel to race to the studio for a live hit. That's the topic of the panel. And we're discussing how you always got to be ready because you never know when the call comes. The call literally comes while I'm sitting on the panel. I'm like, yo, I got to bounce. Mm. I'm on TV. I'm, on, I'm literally on TV in a, 15 minutes later. I'm on TV. So four and a half years go by. I do CNN, MSNBC, Fox News. And here's the Fox News. I did Bill O'Reilly show four or five times. Bill O'Reilly never raised his voice at me. Never. You know why? Bill was like, he looked in that camera, he's like, I'm going to leave this one alone. I'm going to leave this one alone. Now, I ain't messing with this one. Because, and again, you can say arrogant or cocky. Bill O'Reilly knew, mm -mm, I ain't ready for you this know, one. I while, ain't ready for this one. we talking about Bill O'Reilly, what's your thoughts on him getting fired in, in 17? He should have got fired. He should have long got fired. That place was a cesspool of, se of sexism and racism. But again, but see this cat, but he's a white, he's a white man who made the millions of dollars. So they let it, they allowed it to happen. They didn't care. And so we don't get, we don't, we ain't going to get the same breaks in these newsrooms because it ain't ours. That's just a fact. Okay. So when you talk about, and see, again, this is where too many of us get, 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 get so locked in. So four and a half years go by, finally CNN calls me and mind you, I was doing somebody else's pilot. So they, they shot a pilot. They were looking at this sister as a host. So they had me and this white conservative Steve Malsberg. All right. Now, again, it's a pilot. I don't, I'm not working for CNN. We trying to land a deal, but so we're doing a pilot. She start going at it with him over some silly shit. It didn't make any sense to me. I stay level-headed. I'm killing my arguments. My shit is tight. Boom, boom, boom. Guess what? President of the network is in the control room. He goes, who is that? It wasn't my pilot. It was her pilot. I shined in her pilot. I got hired. She never got hired. So, so what I'm saying is, when you got to always be on your game because you don't know who's watching when you're doing your thing. That was December 2006. We came to a deal two, three weeks later. And 
Boom, I'm, st- I'm started February 2007. And so we go through the run. And again, same thing. So you walking in there. So all these folks are like, yo, who the hell is this dude? Some, we hired some radio host out of Chicago. And I remember, man, we were um, um, doing one of the, uh, this was when the election came around, the primaries, and uh, Stephanie Katubi was one of the bookers. And she was like, oh, uh, you know, we just thought, you know, you were just some radio host from Chicago who knew Obama. I said, do any of y'all know how to read resumes? <laughs> See, this is 2000. So this is 2007. She and I had this conversation in 2008. Mind you, I graduated college December 1991. Bruh, I'm in the game 16 years. This, I'm like, I ain't just show up to this shit. What, what are y'all talking about? I had already been managing editor of the Houston Defender, the Dallas Weekly, the Chicago Defender. Award-winning reporter from Austin American Statesman, Fort Worth Star Telegram, had already run Tom Jones BlackAmericaWeb.com, had been at Savoy Magazine, had covered all sorts of stories, was a part of our team that, that covered uh, the, the Branch Davidian standoff in Waco when it got burned down. I was on the ground as a lead reporter, as uh, a co- co-lead reporter for when Timothy McVeigh blew up the Afro P. Murrah, Murrah Federal Building in Oklahoma City. Bro, graduated from college in December 1991, got three promotions in a year and a half. Okay, became one of the youngest news directors in the country when I took over at KKDA Radio uh, in Dallas. That was my resume before CNN. Before CNN. So these cats, like, they don't know who they're dealing with. And so that was the thing, man. And so when when you, but but I tell people, you always got to be in position to be ready. And then how do you build relationships? So what happens? Obama runs. I get Obama, straight up, this would trust me, I get Obama to do a, one of the pilots. They shoot. They got me hosted doing a pilot. We have four different pilots. They, so the sister, Josiane Lopez, she says, bro, we need a big name. I was like, anybody bigger than Senator Obama? Now, mind you, he'd already announced he's running for president. He's the hottest thing in the country. She was like, you think you can get Senator Obama to agree to a panel, agree to a pilot? I was like, hell yeah, I can. And I did. 